advocacy. Uh, allow me to introduce to you Mr. Tunde Omole, the Executive President, Garnet Youth Development Foundation. Mr. Tunde Omole, you have our attention. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, can you all hear me, please? Yes, please. Go on. We can hear you. All right. Good evening, everyone, and I want to say a very big thank you. Sorry, and I, I please, uh, you have to manage my voice the way it is now. I've had a very long day. I just parked somewhere to have this conversation with us. I'm not yet home. Uh, so please, just pardon the way I, I'm coming out. Uh, my name is Omoli Wabatunde, as introduced by the moderator. Uh, I want to say a very big thank you to OLF and foundation for coming up with this initiative is a very good thing and i believe strongly that uh, one of the key things we need to actually make the much needed difference in our communities and our states um, nation and globally is for us to have exposure to capacity building intermittent capacity development the way we're raising and that can actually have a kind of repose effect on and our holistic developments as an individual and as a nation at large. So once again, I want to say a very big thank you for the organizer of this um, interaction and all the participants. Are, I want to appreciate each and every one of us because when you look around these days, you realize that most of we young people, we don't really have that much um, time and commitment to actually learn something new if it is not really about entertainment or so many other things. So I want to give kudos to us. And I wouldn't really want to waste much of our time. Then I have to correct an impression. I'm not coming as a teacher. I'm not coming as a as an academia or anything. So I really want us to have a conversation and interaction around the topic career that was given to discuss. I hope you are all with me, please. Yes, sir, we are with you. All right, thank you. Great. Yes, oh, we have to be double sure that people are actually listening to us, so it won't be that we are doing a sort of basic kind of thing. All right. Yeah. And the topic I was given in is uh, the, the two call advocacy. And I didn't join the conversation yesterday. Uh, I think uh, I joined you guys when you were about wrapping up the activity yesterday. But one key thing that I know is that everything actually pointing at ensuring that we equip ourselves to have the skill sets we need so that we can have a fruitful engagement with our community whenever we want to come up with um, projects, programs, or want to make the much needed difference in a particular area, then we want us to come up with a scientific approach, a, an empirical approach, where at the end of the day, we'll be able to measure the level of our success, where at the end of the day, we'll be able to digest everything we think we need to have a better output outcome and impact at the end of the the project so uh, it's just going to be a kind of build up and we are we are building on whatever conversation we had yesterday just for us to have and that needed skill set to engage people and have a result and oriented engagement with communities on whatever we want to do to make their life better. Now, and most of us will have been hearing the word advocacy. We have been, people talk about it at passing. It's a, it's, a, it's a word that we use commonly in the development space, in NGO space. And, and you know, most of the time, and we don't really have the full grasp of what advocacy actually means. People just use that word the way they like. At times, they insert it in a 
in places where me, they are talking about advocacy. Meanwhile, they actually means lobbying. Some people talk about courtesy visits. They actually call it advocacy. So in the real sense of it, what's actually advocacy? I'm not going to go with any dictionary meaning. I just want us to have this kind of um, approach to it that, okay, I want to um, sell something that will make the much needed difference in a particular settings, areas, place, location, communities. And I feel that for that difference to be made, for me to have a better outcome, for me to solve the problems that I envisage or that I've observed or that have been confirmed, that actually becoming anemical to the growth of that particular certain community, society, and issues, and the rest. I must be able to change the key elements towards the positive results that I want. I don't know if I'm speaking too much grammar here. Because in the name of trying to simplify the whole thing, I hope I'm not complicating it. No, oh, sir, we are with you, sir. I want, as a development worker, as a change maker, as somebody that is passionate about making a difference in wherever they find themselves, let's simplify it to that level. And I see some peculiar issues, problems, challenges, that I think that I really need to change in the particular settings. What are those things that I have to do to ensure that I make that difference? I ensure that that change are made. I ensure that that challenges are tackled. So one of the key things we have to do to do that, after you have come up with an empirical evidence, come up with uh, your community mapping, come up with uh, stakeholders mapping, come up with all those people that you think you are going to meet, get all the scorecard, map all the, all, all, the, all the key stakeholders, let me put it that way. How do I go about getting the attention of those people that matter in that settings so that I can make the much needed difference that I want. And one of the key things that we have to do is for us to do advocacy. And advocacy is just all about all the approach, the strategies that you put together to actually engage critical stakeholders on a particular issue in order for them, for you to enjoy their buying and ensure a sustainable um, change that you want to see. If you ask me to define it the way I just did now, I might not be able to do it again the way the inspiration was coming was the way I define it. But I think we have to take note of all the key elements that I talk about there. We have challenges. We have problems. We have issues. Things are not going normally the way they are supposed to go. And we felt in our own way we want to make that change. How do I now engage the buy-in of those people? How do I ensure that those people, they take ownership of the issues at hand? How do I allow them, to, how do I engage them to ensure that they, they, they key into my idea and 
gets actively involved in the change I want to see in a sustainable manner. Am I making any sense at all, please? Yes, sir. It's only the it's only the couple of people that is talking. Okay, you have muted everybody, Abby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In order not to have interactions. Yeah, you, you can no, unmute it's, it's them. Like we're hearing you, because, sir. You can unmute people and let us have for a few minutes you can unmute them. Let us just have like one or two minutes so a couple of people can talk about the understanding they have about what I've now said. We're hearing you, sir. Please. We are very we're much with you. We are with you, sir. Thank you. We are with, we are with you. By, we are listening very well. We are with you, but... All right. If you are listening very well, I just want two people, a female and a male, to just tell me, to tell me in their own language what I just told you that are advocating me. Advocacy. <laughs> Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Can I speak? Uh, is it Anyola? Okay, Anyola. Anyola, please speak. Please speak. Yes, sir. Um, from your explanation, sir, according to you, advocacy is a method or Mr. approach you can hold on. Yeah. Mr. Gift, hold on. Hold on for Mr. Ayolola, Mr. Gift. I know this is a method or approach used to approach stakeholders in a community or in a project to find that way. <laughs> Oh. All right, great. Can, Mr. Gifts, can you talk, please? Or is it Miss Gifts now? Mr. Gifts, you can talk. Okay, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. So from the definition you gave on advocacy, you said um, advocacy is all about the approach put together to engage the buying of the stakeholders so as to derive a desired result in a sustainable manner. All right, great. Thank God we're all... Please, you can meet everybody now. And let's go back to the... I think a couple of the two people that spoke actually got the concepts. Because when I started this, I told us I don't want to be academic. If you want us to be academic, you can be academic. Because I know that we are going to community. Then when I heard our testimonies, uh, most of us, we are new in development space. So I don't want it to be too academic. I want us to be practical. That's why I'm coming at this level. Now, you want to do advocacy. In, in the academic world, we have different, which is the realistic way of doing advocacy. And you have legislative advocacy. You have media advocacy. You have... Uh, media advocacy, you have a legislative advocacy, you have executive advocacy, you have different advocacy that you can do to actually make a difference in the particular area where you want it to do based on the platform you think you can use to get your things done. Now, let me cite an instance for you. And there was this particular um, activities I was involved in in Northern State. I was the one that actually championed that activity. That was about maybe around 2012 or 2011. No, no, no. It was a long time ago. Let me put it that way. It should be, it should be 2010 or thereabouts or 20, 2011. Okay. The long and short of the whole thing is that I'm a stakeholder. I run an NGO in Northern State and uh, I've been working on sexuality and reproductive health, and I've worked extensively on HIV and AIDS, prevention, care, support, and management. And we were battling with the issue of having funding to actually implement most of our projects. Most of the times, the implementation of our projects, we do in such a way that we do find bara, we leverage on whatever we are. We do a lot of things just to get program done. Then 
there was this project that now came in conjunction with World Bank. World Bank was the main support sponsor of that project. And they are working with NACA. And by extension, they have to work with the State Action Committee on AIDS. State Action Committee on AIDS. And they are supposed to work with National Action Committee on AIDS. Meanwhile, National Action Committee on AIDS, which was NACA, has transformed into an agency. So they have mandated every other state committee on HIV and AIDS to, to transform into an agency too. And the essence of transforming into an agency is actually to have a very strong operational system in place. It's for them to have the key stakeholder. It's for them to work, have a public-private partnership structure so that for effective and efficient management or... Um, and uh, in mitigation of impact of HIV and AIDS in each of the states, including FCT. So most of the states, they they went all out, came up with a meet up with the they met up with all the uh, criteria set up, and they all transformed and they were certified by NACA to be an agency. And they have DG in some cases, they have program manager, they have executive secretary. And they were up and running, and they started benefiting things from NACA. Now, one of the conditions, and there was this fund coming for civil society organization to implement projects on HIV and AIDS. And one of the conditions that World Bank said they will use to finance each of the states that their action committee on AIDS must transform into an agency. And transforming into an agency requires a lot of things, both bureaucratic stuff, legislative, and executive order for us to get it done. So it's a tall order for us. Now, those people that were saddled with the responsibility of transforming into an agency, they are those people that are benefiting as a committee. So they were reluctant to actually make sure that transformation or transition actually happened. So what now happened is that they... they they now told us that, okay, that if you don't transform or um, transform into an agency, then the World Bank, they call that money HPTP2, HIV Development Project or Program Development, something like that, HPTP2. And it was in millions of dollars that will be given to each selected uh, CSO to implement HIV and AIDS intervention program around in two years. And you know that most of us have been using our own personal fund to actually fund. We saw it as an opportunity where we have a, a structure on ground and somebody gave you close to 10 million naira to implement projects and within the space of uh, two years. You know, you are going to have access to capacity building in the area of new approach in managing HIV and AIDS. At the same time, you are going to have funding to strengthen the organization. At the same time, you are going to, people in the community, they are going to benefit by coming up with strategic behavioral change because they are going to expose us to capacity building and so many other things. And we're going to have a better structure in implementing, we're going to have a better, stronger monitoring and evaluation system in place by us having access to that funding. The most of we NGO, we're going to have, we're going to strengthen our capacity and our institution. And this is going to be a very uh, good platform for us. So uh, if we don't transform to an agency, we are not going to benefit. And we push those people that were supposed to do this thing. They couldn't do it. They were reluctant. And the timeline the World Bank gave to us through the NACA is fast approaching. Then what do we do? How do we go about this thing? What are the steps we need to take? Now, I was privileged to go for a training. And that training was talking extensively about what you can do using advocacy, coming up with tools that can help you to actually get what you need to need in, in the board board from communication approach, from, um, from the mapping of your stakeholders that you think that they are going to be instrumental to whatever you are going to do from all those things, then the issue that and you have enough knowledge about the issue that you want to table. All these things, they are something I was exposed to during the course of that training. So I went to work. 
Now, I'm sharing a story with you. But in the real sense of it, I want you to take it as a critical way of us building our own capacity on the approach we can use. In as much that there is no one size fit all, but there are some key elements you have to follow whenever you want to do advocacy to get a sustainable result. Now, number one thing that we have to do is for us to get all the needed information that's okay, we want to make a change. Our tasks are very clear. Our number one task is for the agency to transform from committee to an agency. Uh, the committee to transform from the committee to become an agency. That's the overall bigger picture at that time. And what are those things that we need to do? Okay, if you want to champion this cause, those people that are supposed to champion it, they are reluctant. Okay, we want to champion it as civil society organization. Okay, what are those things that we need to do? First and foremost, we need to gather information as regards that transformation structure because we don't want a situation whereby why we are pushing for trans, trans uh, formation or transition into an agency if it's not something that we have detailed and empirical evidence on, it might be counterproductive. What if we started pushing this case and we realized that at the end of the day, no World Bank gave a timeline, no World Bank issued anything around this stuff that agency, our committee must transform. You know, we are going to make a fool of ourselves. So number one thing you need to do when you want to do advocacy is for you to do a grounded, well-researched documentation of the issue at hand. Because most of the times, when we want to push a case and we have passion, we have everything, we have put things in, in, in the right perspective, and we don't have the needed information, those people that we call secondary stakeholders, there are some people that are clogging the wheel of the progress of whatever achievement you want to follow, they will use anything, any of your mistake, any of the misinformation you push across to, to make sure that the debaru whatever you want to achieve. Sorry for using that word. So in a nutshell, you need to do your research well. You need to get all the needed information. You need to read uh, all the articles that are related to this. You need to do first-hand information gathering. You need to use your secondary data. You need to use your primary data so you won't look like a fool by the time you start whatever you want to do. And now you have gathered all the information. You know what the issue are. Now it is not left to you to process those information into something that will be presentable to whoever you have mapped that are going to be the one to make the difference on whatever issue you want to do. Let me digress a little. There was a time that we were doing community-led total sanitization projects in the community so that, that the essence of that project is to ensure better hygiene for people to be having toilets instead of them going out there to defecate. So it's a strategy that you have to use for you to ensure that communities see the water they are drinking the way they are in feces that they pass on the surface are being washed into that same water they are drinking. And this happens in most of the rural area. Now, in a nutshell, if you want to do that kind of project in a community, you believe that for you to gain a community entry, where you are supposed to go to is for you to go to the KBAC of that locality. Then we felt that we have done our nursery mapping. Okay, let's go and meet KBAC. When we got to the car base, the car base told us categorically that, okay, oh, he has heard also, but if you want to do any project in that town, there is one mama that you need to go and see in that village. Very rural, rural village. Now, they said that mama actually has influential personality in that community. Now, when we now dig deep, we realize that that mama happens to be the only child 
of the person that founded that village. So by the virtue of that, the woman is supposed to be the king. So after the father died, they made that the regent for several years. But along the line, they said maybe they are if I told them that they have to have a male king. So the woman was not happy. But because it was an instruction from the Ifa, she had to vacate that position. So they made someone the other. So that other they made was more or less like a stuji. Anything she wants to do, he, they, he wants to do in that community, he must get directed from that old aged woman before they get it done. So they said that if we dare dig any toilet in that community or encourage community to do without us consulting that woman, then there will be trouble in the line. Now, that is what I call a little digression. Now let's go back to the projects of HIV and AIDS that we're talking about. We now realize that, okay, what do we need to do to get all this thing done? The civil servants that are the core member of the committee they won't let us get our things done. So what do we do? Okay, let's go to other states that have transformed into our agency within our sub-region. Let's get all their documents. Let's find out how they were able to do it. How were they able to do their paperwork? They told us everything. Then we we'll have several documentation to use to actually make sure that we get all those things done. Then we now realize that, okay, we need to penetrate the House of Assembly because that's where they are going to pass the law. They are supposed to be the one to help us to ensure that they make it a law in our state. Even though we are going to sponsor a private bill to push the transformation in line with what they are saying, but we have to come up with some facts, figures, and something that we will see and say that, okay, this is actually what these people need. And, you know, we can't just walk up to the speaker of the house. Within the mapping that we are going to do in legislative advocacy, we still need to do the mapping that we need to do among the member of the House of Assembly. Who are those people that are going to be interested to champion our cause? Who are those people that we can penetrate? So there is going to be advocacy within advocacy. And if you want to do advocacy within advocacy, it's not going to be the same methodology we will use to enjoy the buying of the OR that we're going to use to enjoy the buying of the individual. And one of the key elements you have to look at is the language and the understanding, is the communication strategy you intend to adopt. If I want to make a difference, with a legislator, I know averagely a legislator is, it should be learned, it should be able to read and write. Then if I want to approach all the information I've gathered in an empirical evidence, in an empirical form, I can present it to the guy. I can make a study. I can let him see a sample. I can engage him intellectually at the level that I think I can engage him. It might not be the same way if I want to use women group or person living with HIV as my key contact people to make sure that we penetrate whatever we want to do as regards HIV and AIDS. It might not be the same approach that I'm going to use. And language is very key when you are doing advocacy. You can't go to Yaloja and start speaking like I'm an Americana. You can be the leader of your team but you might not be the best person to speak when you want to engage the other There might be one woman among you that understands the case of speaking. And when you want to do advocacy in a place like um, we want to do legislative advocacy, then we need to come up with a fact sheet. We need to come up with some profile something that at a glance they can see. You know, when you write proposal, you want to do a report, there's something we call executive summary. Executive summary is a reflection, it's just a, it's a summary 
the way it is for the executive. Because most of the time, they don't have the time, all the time in this world, to read through your 30 page proposal. But they just want to get the key element. Okay, what are the challenges? Introduction. Who is writing this proposal? My name is Omale Obatunde from Ghanaian Youth Development Foundation. We noticed that in this social area, the teenage pregnancy in this community is at this day. Out of 100 women of, uh, of um, puberty age, and over 80 of them are having these challenges. And these challenges have caused this problem, this problem, this problem on family death, uh, vaginal fistula, uh, this and that and that. And uh, it's increasing the level of poverty. And uh, from our secondary data or primary data, we notice that the level of poverty in wherever is this, is this. When they see all those figures, I'm sorry I'm speaking Yoruba. They will know that, okay, this person knows they are on you. And you are quoting the source of that. So why this? We want to do this program and we want to do sanitization. We want to do the radio media campaign. We want to do this. We want to do condom distribution. We want to have condom access point so that it's going to be this whatever. We want to build capacity of 30 women. We want to build the capacity of um, Okada riders. We want to do the capacity of this. We want to do this. And at the end of the day, we believe that in the next six months and the... Uh, according to the statistics we got from the primary health center for the first time uh, clinical that are coming to assess a center at the tra traditional bath attender, we noticed that this number of people are the one visiting that are below this age. In the next six months after we are done this project, we propose that, we emphasize that, we believe that uh, the number of the teenage pregnancy in our community will have reduced by 50%. That is the essence of executive summary. So all the all the things we have been saying, all this why, you can just put it in a in a concept note that any average person that wants to say this, we just read through and they understand. They have a grasp of what the problem is. So if you now have time to actually engage, then you can engage, have conversation with them. I'm going to get back to the projects we are talking about. Now, in this case, now we talk about one minute message when you want to do advocacy. In some cases, you want to make a difference. You want to change people. You want to change your community. You have an influential person standing in your face now. And the guy does not have time. The woman does not have time to actually listen to you. And the guy is very key to you achieving whatever you want to achieve. You must have been able to develop a one minute message that can say it in a nutshell, whatever you want to see, where the, who you are, what the problem is, how do you intend to clear it, how can they come in and help you, what do they stand to benefit, what do communities stand to benefit, what are those things? You must be able to have that one minute message in your advocacy. So all these things are what we put up when we are going to approach the key person that will map out to meet. I know you can't rule out the possibility of emotion and lobbying. And when we put that into it, I've seen a situation whereby we were pushing for child rights and acts to be passed into law in Ocean State. We got to House of Assembly, they didn't want to see us for the first time. Then we mobilized ourselves. And you know what we did? We went to the school for the physical challenge. All those kids that we know that they are physically challenged, they are in that school. Those ones that we could put on wheelchair, those ones that we can, then we now push them at the front. When we were going to talk, we said the speaker should come down and come and see why we are there. If you see children that are physically challenged, that are mentally challenged on wheelchair, and they bombard your place, and you say you don't want to talk with them, let's see how we go about it. So at times there can be positive arm twisting. There can be positive way of stirring up uh, emotion so that you can get your desire thing that you want. You don't have to be manipulative. You don't have to be mischievous. You don't have to do things that will make it look like or, uh, you, are, you are trying to work on people in, uh, people's intelligence. They're working on people's emotions because we are all emotional animals. It's not out of place if you really want to get your desired result. 
And most of times, people mix advocacy to mean activism, to mean lobbying, to mean they are different entirely. Because advocacy, the goal of advocacy is for you to get results without damaging your relationship, without damaging reputation. Now, back to my story. We packaged all those factions. We got all the uh, things we needed. Then we approached one of the House Assembly members. The guy supported our cause. Then he talked to the speaker. The speaker now said, that, okay, if this is the case, then we should come and meet a committee. We talked to the committee. Then the committee recommended that he should work with the legal advisor. Then the legal advisor now will now travel to a couple of states got out they did their own thing and they did this and after doing that then we came back to our state then we were part of the uh, drafting of the of the um is it is it bill now or act that eventually become the law that set up and it was a long process i can't begin to tell you one by one but i just want us to know what are those basic elements basic things that it did then you know when you want to do it because after getting your information right, you must set up a team and delegate who is going to take what. Most of the time, because all of us want to shine, all of us cannot shine at the same time. We want to meet only, and I'm the team leader. I in my team, I have somebody that is a final speaker, but because I don't want that person to shine, so only we know I'm the leader of the team. You shall want to talk. Meanwhile, you that you want to talk, you are a slammer. You are not as eloquent as this person that is supposed to talk. At the end of the day, you have this issue. At the end of the day, you might not be able to pass your information across. There are some people that will say, please, I want you to be reminding me the time I have left to. Or if you give me three hours to the talk. Are we there, please? Yes, sir. We are with you. I think you have less than the twelve minutes left. Twelve minutes, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So now, at the end of the day, we did all this thing. We were invited to come and present our documentation at the plenary. We presented. We we, we tell people. Even with HIV, we have sat together, we told them what they are going to say, we asked them to what they are going to push, we asked them to talk about statistics. Some of the people that have been denied their HIV status, we said they should come out and speak, they spoke. And we now told them what the state has to use in terms of resources if we don't do. Then we now told them the projection we have, if we don't do anything around HIV and AIDS within the state, now, in between now and the next two years, then we made them realize that if they are not infected now, they are go they might be infected later. So if they are not even infected later, they are going to be affected one way or the other. We structure all these things in a manner that they can comprehend. And they all got the truth. And it was given an express person. And within a week, it was signed into law. And that was how we had an agency. To God be the glory, I initiated the process. And that was around 2010. Now, you know, that's at the legislative level. What about, I told somebody one day, I said, I give this example, I don't know if I gave it when we're doing clear, whatever, I said, there is this community where at the midnight, all the young people in that community, they go to a faraway place of several kilometers to go and fetch water in the stream. It's a true life story. It's not a fiction. In Benue State. Then they come back. Maybe they live around and they come back around 2 to 30. Now, if you get to that community as a development worker, what will you do for them? 
their children because it is inside the bush that they will go and they will still be walking to fetch water. And the, the thing about that water, why they refuse to change is because they said that water has special power. Is the water that is the river their forefathers have been drinking, and so they must continue drinking that water. And you, as a development worker, you want to change that narrative for them to have a portable water to live and assist. What will you do? Please, can we open people up for just one minute? I need to respond from like two, three people. Yes, that, uh... Hello, my time is fast. Okay, we open it. I will get a response from one or two people. Hello, sir. Hello, your name, please. Yes, sir. From what you've been explaining so far to us, and According to what you just said now as an application, if I am in the person or if I want to work in such, if I want to work in such a community, firstly, like you told us, the advocacy, one, you need to meet the stakeholders of the community in order to know the exact reason why people are being so much of then maybe we might see the king or the human leader or the leader we try to sensitize them to let them know the advantage of them as we do a whole whole getting all right platform. thank you so much Mr. Mr. Anilola all right can anyone to if, if you want to say anything different from what Mr. Anilola said Good evening, sir. All right, Mr. Anthony. My name is Anthony, a consultant treasurer at PEM. Um, okay. With um, everything you've explained, the question is, okay. what will I do in, a, in yeah. such a situation? Thank you. Now, after yeah. what I've gone through the advocacy processes, and mm. we've been prepared to, you know, create a borehole, because I have to come up, up with an issue of bringing in a borehole to the community. If after mm. going through the advocacy process and um, the stakeholders have given their permission, I think by the time the community starts seeing the ease for them to obtain water there at their community, whether they, mm. be, they have belief of how good the stream is or a superstitious belief, by the time they start seeing the ease for them to obtain water, which saves their time, the, uh, the risk, and also a lot of advantages. I think they'll start coming back, which will now give a good name to our development in the community. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much, Mr. Anthony. Uh, Mr. Ayla, thank you. So please, can, can we meet every book? Okay, okay, sir. All right. Um, from the topic advocacy, what I can draw from it is that attitude matters for every member of the team because the attitude okay. you use to a particular group of people will make you to be either to be accepted or to be ignored. When you go to the message by Hello. All right, Mr. Hello. Daniel, I'm listening to you, sir. Yeah. When yeah, you look at the, yeah, when you look at the negative effects of not having clean water, and you are able to have okay. the, follow the protocols and meet the community heads and tell them the advantages of ah. drink of uh, having good water, the, that you to give good health, to prolong your life, to make it for your well-being, when you are able to convince them with a, a proper attitude. I think they will accept you, uh, and now you will be able to carry out your project. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We all got the concept of advocacy, and we got grasp of it. It's so elementary, it's so basic. But there are some unseen things that will actually be inimical to you getting your advocacy right. 
if you miss it at the level of the mapping, if you miss it at the level of observation, if you miss it at the level of norm in somebody in that community that is very critical from your planning, your advocacy, might actually affect the outcome you will get. Let me finish my story. So a development partner now came to that community. All what you said was what the development partner did. They did, they had meeting with some set of people and they believed that they gave them go ahead to sink ball in that community. So in the nook and cranny of that community, they sank like four balls there. At the end of the day, people were still not using the balls. People were still going to that stream to fetch their water at the midnight. It's not just everybody that goes there. It is only the young people that are aware, that are conscious of their environment, that they send to for that. So when they now realize that, ah, what could cause this problem? They now re-strategize and did another mapping. Somebody now told them that, please, can we mute everybody, please? Somebody now told them that they should go and meet a particular old person in that community. That person is not even the king. That person now said, okay. He felt that, okay, you wanted to be doing your thing your own way. But well, anyway, they now use one of the key contact person in that community that is like a nabalist to engage the man. When the now they now told them the true picture of what was actually going on. They said in that community, it has been a creed by their forefathers that they had an arrangement then, an unwritten arrangement that they must be sending their mature-minded young people to go and fetch water at that stream. And this is what happened. They say it's a taboo in their community for people of a particular age to see their parents making love. And the way they build the houses in that community, they build them like Fulani houses where everybody must sleep under one cover. And these people, they are predominantly farmers. And a bunch of them are very, very sexually active. So when they come back from the farm, after they have eaten their dinner and they want to relax, they want to make love with their partners or their spouses. And they wouldn't want a situation whereby those people, according to the taboo that has been established by their forefather, to be seeing them while they make love to their spouses. So they have an arrangement unwritten arrangement from their forefathers that those kids from this particular age that they know that they might be awake at that point in time that they should go and fetch water. By the time they go to fetch water, they will have done whatever they want to do. By the time those kids use their leg to go to the stream and come back, they will have been tired by the time they go back. So they will sleep or even if they still want to do another round. After that time, they can still do as many as they want till daybreak. Now, in that community, it's thinking ball is the remedy to their problem. The only thing you need to do for that community is for you to do an advocacy and give them an orientation on how to build houses that will maintain the privacy of the parents so that the children won't be witnessing them while they are making love. So why I brought this thing up is that for you to know that and the foundation of our advocacy is very key in our mapping, in talking to the right people. The information that we are using is very key on who, how we pass our information across. The people that are part of our team is very key for us to involve those people that are part of the community in planning for advocacy in some cases. 
people that can exhibit emotion, that can come up with emotion, or come up with some thoughts that will actually make the much needed difference, we need them. Then advocacy, in some cases, we are saying in our everything looks so perfect. There is room for advocacy in advocacy. There is room for change of strategy. There is room for us to call native intelligence into place in this part of the world. Do you know some people will be opposing to whatever you want to do? It might be because it's a source of livelihood for them or that's where they are getting bribed. And they wouldn't want you to do something for the general populace because it's for their own personal gain. And they will tell you that the, the reason why they won't get all this thing done. There are one million and one ways to go about advocacy, but you know if you remember the key element that we started with. You want to make a change. You want community to take ownership of your idea of the change you want to see. You want them to enjoy their buying. You want whatever you do to, 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 to be sustainable. What's the essence of the advocacy you do that you just got your result and at the end of the day, things are not really working out the way they are supposed to be at the end of the day? So in a nutshell, advocacy is a concept that actually talk about, I want to make a difference. I want to make a change. Who are those people that can help me on this journey? What are those things that can make them see the need for them to be part of the process? Now, if you look around us now, people are talking about female genital mutilation. Way back then, some people still feel that if you don't cut, do female genital mutilation, your children will turn out to be a promiscuous or whatever. It has been a long time tradition that we have been doing. I need not share you need to look at it critically. What are those things that we can do? What are those people that we can do? Who are the people that I can use? There was a time I have conclusively, I have this friend. This is informal. There is still a form of advocacy. He was trying to preach Christ to people. And that Ebon happened to be number one courtist on campus. We don't know he met Jesus Christ. So when he was still going to student union building to preach the gospel after he has been converted, that he met Christ, people still believe that he's a liar. When he still come, if they are playing snookers, everybody will just guess it. Hey, two words don't come, two words don't come, the one, number one, number one don't come. At the end of the day, he was able to champion and convince a bunch of the uh, frat guys on that campus to come to Christ. And it was like a movement. That's at the religious level. If you look at it at the critical level, there are some things you have to respect when you are conducting advocates. You have to respect the culture of the people you are talking to. And we talk about communication. We think communication is all about verbal. We have non-verbal communication. I know verbal might not even be the movement of your body. It might even be what you are putting on. I can't go to J markets want to speak to women in OJ. I'm now talking like a tetracycline. I look like somebody that they just deported from abroad. And I'm talking to your OJ on personal hygiene. You just look at me as if maybe I'm not making any sense. What happens to your lovely, clean Iro and Buba? What happens to your Buba and Soro with Villa, Betia Villa, lovely Villa, Goimapa that we use? What happens to you speaking on diluted Yoruba? If you know that you are the team leader and your Yoruba is not diluted and your Yoruba is not laid with humor of Ibadan, you have nothing speaking with our people. Now I'm pointing at some of those things that might be inimical to you having successful advocacy. Then don't have a, a personal cause to settle. Don't turn your advocacy to activism. Activism is different from advocacy. You want sustainability. You don't want to arm twist people. You don't want to puncture with people's ego. You don't want to 
to drag their belief in the mud. You don't want to take anything away from their culture. You don't want a situation whereby you disrespect their belief in the, in the face of those people that do respect them. All these things, you need to be extremely sensitive to the culture. You need to be extremely sensitive to what is sustainable somewhere. You need to be extremely sensitive to what can anger can cause rate, can cause a lot of things. We have visited one KBC. They just made him a, one of the first class KBC in Ocean State. They just made him the king then. So the Baba will want to show, say, he gave power. So we went to the KBC. We are going to talk to the KBC. We prostrated. And after prostrating KBC, then we stood up in front of KBC. We are going to talk. The KBC was so angry and told all of us to be on our knees. That how can we be talking to him, all of us standing, and we are not doing this? That thing, that approach nearly marred the essence of us going. That the pair, we kept our calm. That's why the fact that we had over 60 something years old among the advocacy team, all of us nailed down. But as he was ranting, he was saying some things they, which we knew that he was wrong. We were just pleading, Kabi is so, Kabi is so, because we knew that. He heard the key to the success of our project. At the end of the after ranting, I saw that we were on pass up. He, he messed up. He, 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 he took away our dignity, even the elderly person among us. He didn't because we got a hide on the ball. A hide on the ball. At the end of the day, it was one that ordered that they should give us chair. It was one that said they should give us drink. And I said, why don't you listen to us? And that was where we got the greatest results on that project. So well, the fact that you use one particular approach, the elementary approach, there are some cases you need to go to people's house in the midnight to go and lobby and do advocacy. At times, you need to do some things that might look um, out of normal with people you need to talk to. So these are the basic things that we can, if you want to talk about advocacy, advocacy, smart advocacy is like a two week extensive project of uh, training, but we have to compress everything within this short period for us to be able to get the graphs. So if you want to know more about it, you can lay your hand on some materials, read them, then try to experiment in your community, make mistakes, learn from your mistakes, then over the time you can get better with, with it and then you can get your but you should put it at the back of your mind. Advocacy is all about results. Advocacy is all about sustainability. Advocacy is all about relationship. Advocacy is all about presenting facts. Advocacy is all about trying to bring everybody to ensure that we have a common ground. Advocacy is all about respect to culture, belief, creed, race, ethnic, and everything. And by the time we grow in advocacy on our own, then I believe we are going to have a better society, a better community, a better world, and better Nigeria. Thank you very much. God bless. Wow, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Uh, that was so insightful and uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, I'm just trying to look for words to use. Thank you so much, Mr. Tude Omole, for that wonderful delivery. We really appreciate that. And if I may summarize everything that you've said, I will just use a sentence. I'll say that it's not all about what you want. It's about what they want. It's not about what you want. Yeah to see it's not about what they want you to do for them thank you so much yes Mr. Omole. thank you so much yes. uh, at this point we will open the floor for maybe five or six questions uh so let's do it briefly let's do it quickly uh, five or six questions at this moment so if you have a question please you can uh, unmute yourself or the admin can unmute you and quickly uh, we don't want uh, stories just go straight to your questions and the uh, the resource person will answer your question, please. Thank you so much. Questions?
So does that mean we all on the hello? Questions, please. Or should we assume maybe we all can, on? Maybe they can unmute themselves. Okay. Uh, at me, please, can you um, unmute them so that uh, they can ask this question? All right, somebody is raising hands up. Uh, Daniel Kosmas, if I'm correct. Good evening, sir. Once again, I'm um, Anthony evening. Andrew, consultant right. treasurer um, from Pem Police Retiree. Um, sir, in your statement, you made a statement like um, in a process like this, one might likely go away from the normal. Now, in a situation whereby you have to do something that is not in your own culture, whereby if done in another culture, in your own culture, it's my, it's like a taboo to you. In that situation, what do I do? All right. Um, as, as, let, let me just answer this briefly. As a development worker, at some point, you throw your where you are coming from in, 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 in your pockets just for you to achieve your results. Uh, I've, I've done um, community advocacy and a religious advocacy and sensitization in a mox where I have to dress like an afa. They even gave me sabak, I had something to, to put on my head to make me look like an afa because by me going to a church, I have a mosque, and I look extremely like a Christian. I've already created a kind of gap in between me and them for me to get something across to, to the people I really want to enjoy their buying to whatever I want to do. There was a time we were doing advocacy up and down, we were targeting religious leaders. And there was this particular church we went, and among us, we had this reverend sister. So we went to mosque together, even though they know that she's a reverend sister. So they respect that, that she's coming from him because, you know, in my state, we are religious tolerant. So especially in Southwest, we know that. So they, nobody mind what was going on. But when we got to one of the white garment churches, and we said we went to see the old show, so that at the end of the day, we'll come to go and do the sanitization. They brought out a water. And they sprinkled those water on all of us. You get what I'm saying? That was outrightly against my own belief. Because I didn't know what they put inside that water. And they asked all of us to help us. But in my church mind, I know that, come on, the greatest religion or belief that I can have is a service to humanity. So nothing will happen to me in as much that I want to make a difference and I'm affecting these people positively. We have gone to a community where they give you water to drink and you say that the sediments of the water you are drinking, you might even be seeing that pole there. It's either you fake drinking it or you sip a little and you go home and go and report to your doctor immediately. Because if you don't drink that water, you are not associating with them. You want to talk to the community, you want them to buy, I enjoy buying. They gave you yam, you said, no, you don't hit that. They gave you this, you said, you can't do it. So if you want to do a develop, be a development worker, it's, it's a commitment to that can create somebody, somebody that cannot even take out of the water with thinking, I want to come and tell us about something. You should get out. And one person, before you know it, one person that is most influential will tell them that you are not taking this thing, we are not taking our go. Now, when I said out of the normal, I'm not saying that you should do something that will cause psychological or physical or mental injury to you outrightly. There are some things you can maneuver. What if somebody said, okay, we meet, you want to see a particular politician, and the only place you can see that politician is at midnight, where they meet at the club, where they discuss. 
And you know that that particular man, they said he comes to Tennis Creek, but he doesn't live there until 1 a.m. And you are going to his office to go and meet him, where he has a bunch of people waiting for him at the office. You won't get your results. You need to go to that tennis club to have an engagement. So when I say normal, I'm not saying you should do something, you should do something that would be joyous to you or whatever. But there's always a middle line where you can go without crossing the main line that can be meaningful to your own health or your own well-being, according to WHO. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that, sir. Uh, do we have more questions? Do we still have more questions, please, so that we can make this snappy? It's like people are now um, unmuted. There's any English like that? Admin, can you please, uh, yeah, admin, can you please help? Uh, maybe unmute some people that want to ask questions. <laughs> All right, I think. Um, do we have questions? Uh, yes, I, 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 I have a question okay. and probably a suggestion. Okay. I was. Uh, uh, All right. Yes, it is true that uh, we. It is good to come from the top, meeting the responsible person, like the the OBA, the chief of the committee, and uh, the responsible people. But I want to see, is it also necessary to make uh, to know also the youth group? Because, you know, the youth is the life of the, of the community. I think uh, they should not be ignored because uh, when uh, the youth also know what is going on in the minds of uh, uh, the advocacy people, I think they will give them their support also. They will not try to cause strife and chaos for the people that are carrying out the program. Thank you. All right. I, I think maybe there's something we are missing out there. When we make reference to community leader or about KBC, we are not being particular about, we, we talk about stakeholders. Stakeholder are young people. But because a bunch of the things we are going to be doing involves us engaging community most of the time. No youth group exists in isolation without them key in into whatever is being done from the head of the community or the major leader, or the major leader in the community. So we, 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 for the fact that we are making references to the community leader or whatever does not mean that we are leaving. We said all the critical stakeholders and that's women group, even children group. Seven. Children group, women group, and youth group, everybody group. They have to be involved in whatever we want to be in as much that they are going to be the direct beneficiary. And that's why... They don't do, there's something we call in social economic development, there's a concept we call participatory rural appraisal. Most of our projects, they don't do participatory rural appraisal. And that's one of the examples I made when I was talking about the ball in Benway, the water, wherever. You have to make it participate in the sense that it's not like what the moderator said the other time. It's not about what you want is about what you think they want. Cheyima Kinde, the governor of o -O 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 -N, Oyo State, was saying that there was a place he went in Okeogun, and he felt that these people, they are predominantly farmers. And he felt that, okay, he needs to make an access road to their farm, that that should be the power that, that he was just telling them, that when he had an engagement with them, when he had an engagement with them, that what they told him that, sir, we don't want um, Rodo to bring our farm wherever outside, that all we need is that we want a police station. Ah, 
He said he was taken aback. Sir, why do you want a police station? He said, they are farm produce, that there are some people that do come to steal their farm produce, that they won't come when they are toiling, when they are tilling the ground. It is when they are close to harvesting that they will come and come and cut their stuff away. That by the time they catch them, most of them, before they take them to police station, they must have run away. That they want a police post in their community. Now, they might need that police post. It is not left to you as an advocate to guide them that in as much they need police station, they equally need a good road. So how do we ensure the balance? Then whether you like it or not, they need security. So, you know, you meet all stakeholders that can benefit or ensure the outcome and sustainability of your project. That's why most of the government projects fail. You just see them tomorrow, they are building vocational center in the community and they will do all the political jamboree, everybody will come. At the end of the day, that place won't be functional. That's why the concept of PTA, of uh, school-based management committee, of World Health Development Committee is still a workable structure where the community will be the one overseeing the primary center, where the school-based management committee, the committee will be the one overseeing the school. But you know, most of our government, they have not adopted it. In some cases, where they adopt it, they politicize it and they give their political cronies that position. At the end of the day, we won't get results. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for that. Yes, uh, Mr. Damu Mohamed. You have a question? Mr. Odif, I think you have a question too. I've been being Hello, Mr. Damu Mohamed. Yeah. Okay. I think please, can you unmute? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, uh, good, Mr. Evening. Adiri, uh, good evening. Yeah. yeah, my name is Eberio Keke. Now, I want to have ask, okay, I want to ask a question. Um, for instance, you come into a community where okay. you have, where you have, uh, where, you, where you want to do advocacy, and um, the stakeholders, uh, there is, uh, they, they gain something like um, benefits, okay. example, for. Example okay. road maybe for example road construction, and uh, um, there is a benefit for the stakeholders why the road has not been constructed because they are gaining something from the government. So you as an agency comes and you want to change that, you want to cut off their benefits. So how are you going to uh, really address that? You know, uh, which stakeholders are you going to pay some money to them, you know, in order to uh, make them believe that uh, maybe they can still benefit something from you? Or uh, are you going to, how are you going to convince them, you know, without really giving them something? Thank you, sir. All right. And I, I'm not sure there is any projects or any intervention you want to do that will make provision for bribe. Okay. And at the same time, we are talking about advocacy, advocacy for us to get so There are some things you don't, you might do and employ all the advocacy you can use and you might still not get your results because of the principalities that are involved, especially in this part of the world. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, the trending issue that is ongoing now is all about Mobad that he was that the guy, the musician that died. And people are actually enraged. They are going about it. What they are doing is a form of um, we can say advocacy that is targeted at some changes they want to happen. And you can see the result, the advocacy is actually. And you know, most of the, before before people started uh, doing a kind of, of protest and the rest, peaceful protest now, people have bombarded the new media platform to actually ensure that these things are done right. 
Now, the conventional advocacy methodology might not be enough in some cases to get some things done. You need to leverage on the opportunity of new media. You need to leverage on the opportunity of the conventional media platform to do some things. But anything that you know at the end of the day might and affect your well-being, might put you at risk. Because whether you like it or not, we actually have so many wicked people around. They can kill, they can maim, they can do a lot of things. In as much that you are going about your business to make the difference, you need to be extremely conscious of the fact that people are wicked too. I'm just being realistic here. I'm not being academic. I'm not being um, a pessimist. I'm not being too overtly optimistic. I'm just being a realist. I'm sorry, I don't know, moderator. Can I share one little experience, sir? Mr. Moderator, do I have like one minute to share one little you experience, can... sir? Do that with you. Now, one, one, two minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let me, let mm -hmm. one, two minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, there was this particular project that was a program manager on that project. It was a global fund, AIDS, tuberculosis, mm -hmm. and malaria yes. project. Yes. Are you there, please? I need to share this experience so yes, Mr. Iberi can understand yes, what I'm talking about. Yes, yes I, I, I can. Now, okay. and I was a okay, program okay, manager for the states for HIV on that project. You can make it snappy, sir. All right, sir. So I was the whatever on that project. So uh, it's in my states. Okay. I'm from Ocean State. And the, 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 this particular local government that we went to, when we went, you know, that project is in phases. We have sanitization phase. We have capacity building phase. We have implementation stage. So those people that we are going to work with at the level of capacity building, they were World Health Development Committee. And these are the committees set up by a National Primary Health Care Development Agency, see, which they oversee directly. They are community members, they are leaders, they are health workers that will be overseeing the needs of primary health center, clearing the bush, taking care of the place, do raise resources, mobilize people. It's a nice concept. So we came and we, we, we synthesized some people. We never knew that those people that constitute the World Development Health Committee members, they are people of political link. So with this synthesization in around October, then there was a change of government in Ocean State. Then it was PPP that was in government. Then Arab Beshola came in when we did synthesization. So after I had come in, so we were supposed to commence capacity building, I think, in January. So when we go there in January to commence capacity building, I has been the governor. Then we now invited 25 people for capacity development. When we got to the hall that day, we met 50 people. Ah, what's going on? Now when I asked as promotion officer, he now told me that there is one law, that those people that we decentralization for, they are PDP and DP is no longer in government. We now have APC. So the APC world representative said they have to be part of the training that I want to feel like work for peace our time. Ah, what was going on here? So I was now trying to talk to them generally. And those people that came that had the funding, they came from Abuja, they saw the old scenario. So I now told them, I explained to them that ah, this thing as it's going oh, hey. And whatever the, the, the people that we sent us are the people who are supposed to train. They felt that I've taken side with those PDP guys. They started labeling me that I'm a PDP person. Right behind me, they are walking up and they're pacing up and they're telling me, hey, Odeo, Melo, me, oh, broom, be For those people that are not speaking Yoruba, they were cursing me. They said that some people, they, 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 there will be bloodbath today. Now, the action need people, when they saw that ah, issues are at risk, I said, okay, Mr. Molly, we need to leave this thing. I said, leave what? This is my state. I know how much they are committed to this money for two years. 
why will I leave these people? I need to talk to my people. They say, okay, I'm on my own. No, that they are living. I say, if you want to leave, leave. This is my home state. You can't take almost per year, take almost 20 million era from one local government. Then you return the money to global fund. For what? Then I now call two stakeholders. I identify why they were ranting. I identify one stakeholder here. I identify one stakeholder at the other part. I now called them. I said they should come, please. I want to talk to them. Kilo Feber also, I would you know, they harassed me. I still called them. I went to the park of the local governments. I explained to them what they stand to gain. I explained to them what they stand to lose. I told them this thing. I told them that they can solve this. Thing. You know what I did when I was talking, acting out of the normal? I'm a program manager. If they did that project, my salary won't stop. I will get all my allowances. I had to prostrate for the two of them because they are Italian people and I'm a Yoruba boy. I prostrated for almost two minutes. That thing actually melted their heart. They told me that I should go upstairs. Within themselves, the PDP, uh, Keith, person, and whatever, all of them sat together. They talked. The next thing I saw, they just climbed upstairs. They said, Oh, yeah, Luku, uh, Maloli, this person, go home. At the end of the day, we were able to have that training. Then that local government happens to be the best result we have. It was their representative that went to present all over Nigeria for the outcome of that project at the end of the day. So at times you don't say never when things are happening. But when you know that they are crossing some boundary that can endanger their life, please run for your life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Moderator, sir. Mr. Moderator, sir. Please, no more questions. Thank you. God bless you. Please, no more questions. We have. Our time has gone already. All right. Thank you, uh, my boss, Mr. Kunde. Please, sir. Mr. Can you tell yeah. them if anybody has any question? Let them type it. Then we can respond to it later. So we give okay. everybody the benefits. Let them type oh, whatever question they have and send it to the platform. Then we can respond to it. Maybe through voice note or by typing back. All right, sir. All right, sir. That will be a better option for us. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Mr. Alushagun, I think maybe network up. Yes, sir. Make him to left. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Today Omole, uh, for that wonderful delivery this evening, uh, talking about the tool called advocacy. Uh, again, for Mr. Today Omole, Executive President, Ghana's Youth Development uh, Foundation. We appreciate your time this moment. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on, I'm uh, let me call on the Ambassador Kolawele Abisagbo for announcement. Yeah. Ambassador Kolawele Abisagbo, you have the floor for announcement. In everyone, yeah, I hope uh, I don't think he's around. To, 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 Ambassador Kolawole, yes, are you sir. around? I'm here, I'm on. I was okay. for a brief moment. Good evening, everyone. Okay. I'm very right. sure 